Okay. Um, I would like to call to order this uh, October 21st Board of Assessment Review uh, meeting. Uh, Tracy, can we start with uh, who's present? Mr. Cloutier? Here. Mr. Sanctus? Here. Mr. Torrens? Here. Mr. Chamberlain? Here. Mr. Parkinson? Here. Mr. Peoples? Here. Uh, will we salute the flag, please? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, okay, could we have the uh, approval of the October 10th uh, minutes? I make a motion we approve as written. Second. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think there's a, on page two, mm -hmm. the third paragraph down, um, stated that Mr. Scott, is that, whatever, I don't know what's that name, stated that everyone was treated the same, <clears throat> treated the same in, the, in that class and there was no intent to discriminate, that paragraph. Mm -hmm. Is that that next word in there was no unjust? Shouldn't that be discrimination? Yes. Discrimination. Okay. Would that change? Sorry. Um, can we Could catch? Make a motion to yeah, accept it. Motion to accept with the change. Thank you. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay, so tonight is the continuation <coughs> of the uh, appeals uh, to the board of Oak Hill Holdings LLC at all, and tonight is the deliberation night. So we uh, we we received both the taxpayer and uh, the town's. Finding the facts. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. Appreciate that in, in a timely fashion. Um, and so tonight is basically open uh, a discussion and deliberation, and uh, to come to some sort of consensus, hopefully. And then, which then then following such, we will <coughs> give our own finding of facts to council. He will put it together. And then we will uh, possibly have another meeting to affirm that. Those uh, that are put together, uh, unless we get it all done tonight. Okay? All right. Does everybody want to take a leap into this uh, delivery, start the deliberation? Nick, I appreciate you're here. Obviously, you're, <coughs> you can't. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leap in first. Please. Okay. Okay. This is on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, the, the nearly last sentence of Mr. McDonald's um, brief, before the, before the final paragraph that says the bottom line, but the last sentence before that says, the town's two revaluations were ad hoc and not part of a comprehensive plan. I felt that that was disingenuous as... The plan was do part of it one year, part of it the next year, and that was always the plan. So that is not an ad hoc, let's just do, you know, so-and-so's neighborhood, or let's just, you know. So I thought that really, that sentence really wasn't um, accurate for what really happened. And so I just wanted to make that comment. And then if I go to the end of... Um, has a suffixus <laughs> statement. Uh, in item number 10, on the last page, on page four, well, it's not the last page, page four, it said, um, number 10, in particular, courts in other jurisdictions have found that, quote, reevaluation and reassessment in a good faith effort to achieve uniformity and equality in a given district need not be delayed until the entire district can be we vowed at the same time. And that was one of the arguments that Mr. McDonald meant, said was that even though 
we did them in two phases, we should have waited to, to implement them all together. And, and based on this uh, court case, Proofs versus New Orleans, um, that wasn't necessary to do that, the courts have found. So, so between those two, I mean, there was a lot of other things. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer, but there were a lot of other things. But I found um, that if, if that were the case, then we did have a comprehensive plan on how to reevaluate the whole town. Mm -hmm. and, and we went forward with that and implemented each phase as it was completed. And I found that that made sense given all this legal garbage, not being a lawyer. Um, you know, that, that was my summation of how I saw it. I'll jump in from here and say that I totally agree in a, on both points. Um, you know, I don't think that there was any kind of discrimination or, or um, you know, improper um, timing with all of this. I think it was a, a matter of pre being practical um, and correcting, you know, the, the idea being that they were going to correct the largest um, discrepancy from, from tax valuation in that class first. And I think that was probably the appropriate measure to take if you had to do it in two parts. And I don't believe that it would have been um, prudent, really, to have delayed implementing that revaluation based on how much of a discrepancy there was at the time. Um, I, you know, I agree that you, you, you brought up a good point and uh, about the, the court findings that, that have said that it's not inappropriate to do it in two phases. I think that's, that's reasonable. I don't think that there was any kind of um, intent that w to harm anybody, uh, you know, in doing it that way. And in fact, I, I think it was a, quite deliberate to not harm people. Uh, I think it was kind of trying to put some equality back to the system in as quickly a, a way as could possibly be done under the current circumstances of how a, a, a town revaluation needed to happen. Um, and, you know, I, I think everything I've seen justified the order, the time frame. I think that it's within a year. It was a reasonable amount of time to lapse between the two assessed uh, two different assessments of the two different classes and the implementation was not, I, I didn't find that that was unreasonable for a delay. Um, and we'll stop there for right now, I think. Okay. Thank you. Matthew? Um, following on the same suit, um, there was comment from the city, uh, the town, that uh, the city manager uh, went to the council and put together a referendum <clears throat> to try and get the city to vote on the money necessary to make um, the funds available for one town-wide um, reassessment. And, of course, uh, that got shot down. Uh, I, I do really look at that as the city made a very good faith attempt to go through the process to get the funds necessary to have it all done at one shot um, without the ability to have the funds, the city was, uh, the town was handcuffed to an extent um, that they did it in several steps uh, without, and it's very tough I think to prove intent, but uh, without, in my opinion, the intent to uh, either defraud anybody or to discriminate against any class to raise the money to do a two-step um, evaluation. And, and with that, it's, it's a little part, but I really, I keep going back to where the city did their best to try and raise the money to do it all in one time. So I, with that, my feeling is that the city or the town did their best without any level of discrimination to achieve what they needed to achieve. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> um, I guess I would just 
reiterate a couple of things. I think cer certainly the, uh, we do know that the commercial property um, had been undervalued for a long period of time, um, certainly vis-a-vis -vis the uh, residential property. I think it made sense to, um, when undergoing an, an, a revaluation, to start there. <coughs> there were less properties. Um, 900 or so, I believe, as opposed to 8,800, and that's where the town started. Um, I, this was done over roughly a two-year period of time. However, it was, it was in, in a way, it could be called continuous. They were done back to back. There, there, it, the intent was to get it all done. Um, it, uh, the uh, comment about getting getting one done, hold off on those values, get the residential side done, and then implement all that, I think uh, is problematic in and of itself. I think it could have potentially uh, spurned, uh, uh, spurned the, the residential people. Or, uh, and then also, I think it could have um, opened the town up itself for some potential lawsuits if we did that. And I think if we did the residential first, bless you, and not the um, not the non-residential, I think we could be sitting. There could be different taxpayer here in front of us, as I think uh, Kelly pointed out in his brief. Um, so <clears throat> the. The town did value the same class together, so um, to me that comes under a partial reval, and certainly there was no intent to discriminate. I don't, I don't think um, uh, the taxpayer said that. I just think that certainly there was an, an intent to discriminate. Um, certainly the taxpayer has its burden to, to prove that it's manifestly wrong. I. I don't believe that it's manifestly wrong. I, I believe that, uh, that there was not unjust discrimination. I think this was, as I said, a two-year process back to back. It didn't delay. Um, the, uh, all the non-residential taxpayers were treated the same. I think that's the important part. There is a uh, paragraph on page three, I think, in the taxpayer's brief about uh, the top of that top three about saying the courts in other states have encountered the same situation and conclude that this, the difference is key. And they talk about two identical properties assessed differently because the assessor can't revalue all the properties in one year. And in the second scenario, the assessor is trying to raise all properties to the same ratio and raises one property but not the other. And neither of the above examples has the goal of equalization been reached, yet the two situations are distinguishable in important ways. First, Situation is lack of equalization between taxpayers is undesirable but permissible because caused by logistical problems which may be temporarily beyond the power of the city to correct. But the point here is in the second case, it's the, the, the lack of equalization is caused by an intentional and arbitrary application of two different debasement factors to two identical properties. Um, <clears throat> so, and his contention is that. This is exactly the situation here. I, I say it's a little bit different because um, we're, we ha we're assessing um, a group, a li a li similar properties in and of themselves as opposed, to, as opposed to the residential and opposed to the um, um, non-residential. So uh, I understand the point that's trying to be made. I, st I still feel that the, the town Work diligently to try to get the evaluation done. There was certainly a need. It was uh, undervalued. Both sides were undervalued. They started the evaluation process with the, the one they thought um, was, was more undervalued for the longest period of time. And then uh, there's certainly a moving, it's a moving target because as you start one valuation, values increase. The percentages of getting to 97% or 100% or whatever, that's always hard to hit a moving target um, with appreciation. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I guess I just would uh, reiterate what everyone else has said here. I don't feel that there's been unjust discrimination uh, on the top part of the town. 
and um, I would move to, um, to deny the abatement by the taxpayer. So, Derwood, do you want us to? So, um, I've uh, appreciated the submissions by the respective attorneys. They're very well written and concise. Um, I think it's best practices, though, to come up with something on your own and not adopt one or the other um, word for word. Mm -hmm. um, I, mm -hmm. I think that um, uh, Mr. Kasifikas's, um, uh findings are, are excellent, uh, but uh, perhaps stylistically I would um, uh, disagree with the weighting so much of uh, case law on the, on the local board. I think perhaps he was doing that as a way to making sure everything was in front of you uh, mm -hmm. so nothing would be lost. Um, but um, not that it matters whether he would take umbrage or not, but I think that could be cut down to really focus on the cases that are stated in your um, policies and procedure rules. All oh, that's a bit old, and there's some newer cases, particularly, of course, um, the uh, Petrin case. Um, so I, I think we could uh, trim that down a little bit. Another thing I think you, uh, they could be added, I, and I've, I've made close notes of what everybody said, is uh, uh, tying this back to some particular testimony, uh, the testimony of the assessor or the testimony of the town manager, um, and that you found that testimony to be credible. I think that that's... Uh, something that the courts put weight on when there's um, um, testimony that, that a board or a jury finds to be credible, <coughs> then um, it's hard hard to second guess that. Um, doesn't mean you can't, um, but and that where the the battle will probably be is uh, not so much about the testimony, but be about um, the interpretation of the, of the law. So I think the key phrases are, are uh, intent to discriminate. Um, manifest injustice, um, you know, just value. Um, I'm not sure I, w I would be interested in weaving a lot of out-of-state case law, although I'm not saying we shouldn't. But So I think I could take this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to do this on the fly. When you, when you do it, uh, things uh, too fast, that's when mistakes happen. I mean, right. this is a case that you could envision uh, going to the next level, to the Superior Court or to the the Supreme Court, I, I have no idea, and that shouldn't be a factor in, in, in your decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, but like every case, you, you want the, the paperwork to you know to put your best foot forward, and and uh, then um, others will take it from there, not mm -hmm. me or, or not you, and and we'll learn um, at some later date whether you were whether you were right or wrong or someplace <laughs> in between, which has happened. Well, just <laughs> we, whether we were agreed with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, Sort of like nice to nice to hear back. Um, they don't they don't write you a letter. They just issue something. So um, <laughs> I'm going to be away starting Wednesday through Monday. So, but I probably if if you were serious about the Halloween, I'm not sure you were. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't know what. It, well, I just pull all the shades down and turn the lights <laughs> off in my house right now at that, at that stage, hoping no one comes by. Anymore. <laughs> uh, but so I'm available. <clears throat> Um, why don't we, um, when we get some time, why don't we, as a board, come up with our own findings of fact? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. you can write them down. Um, if we, uh, if we can take that individually and in, in no particular yeah, order. And, 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 well, and I think go to number five in our in our rules because it's very specific. On, on how you oh, get the standard. Yeah, so there's some findings, though, that are, you know, like like really rudimentary stuff, like how many properties there were and that sort of thing. That do you I just want to be able to do that? You put those together yourself? And I'd prefer it, but if, if that, that, I, that work for, I work at your pleasure. No, that's I, fine. I, I, no, I think, I think that makes sense. They're almost <clears throat> given, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. We're going to have to review it anyway. Right, you always, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it would probably be a, a cleaner rather than sort of hacking around with it um, now and trying to, because you guys always are good at giving me feedback <laughs> on, you know, everything, you know, mm -hmm. content, substance, um, and style, and grammar and everything, so I'd, I'd prefer to have it. So what would you like to rest now? I think I've got the, um, 
I appreciate the, the way this has been handled um, in terms of everybody speaking. So sometimes uh, boards, uh, there's only one or two people speaking. So this board is great that everybody's not afraid to speak up. So I've got good notes of what everybody has said. Okay. I don't think I need anything else. Um, one thing I, will, I would intend to do is give you, and I've, I've said this before, I just want to make sure I say it every time, um, as much as anything for the record. When I put together the draft findings, don't comment on them on, online. Hold your comments till we get back here into a meeting, because that would be seen as a meeting. Um, and then you, you can go through it. We can move some stuff around. At that time, then I email the final final to Tracy, and then Alan comes in and signs it. And mm -hmm. Then we go from there. Then you'd have your vote. OK. So. You basically feel you have enough to put together some. I think I do. From what we just said tonight. I do, and I, you know, I have notes from. And then I, I, I'd probably tie it in a little bit to the assessor and, and Tom and, um, and and some case law and, and take some of those those key comments you made, quotable quotes. I mean, it's it's a balance. It doesn't have to be everything that could be said. But it's got to be a, enough of an in indication to the Superior Court that you did a thorough review and, and thought of the legal issues and, uh, and you applied the right <coughs> standards and that you applied the, the facts to the law as best you could, came up with a decision. And at that point, your job is done. I mean, until they send it back to you if they say you're wrong. But I mean, that, you, you just you did take your shot at it. And, and the, these discrimination cases, is, is, you know, we've had a, had a couple of them now, and you don't see them that often. So it's. Uh, it is an interesting area, and you know, I, I compliment the lawyers how they uh, participated well and got you the information you needed. So you know, um, it's, it was a, a really good legal discussion for sure. And I think in our in our rules and procedures, this whole paragraph on um, how to remedy a discrimination is very specific. Yeah, and I think that I would have, I would definitely <laughs> focus the board on that. There's a couple um, paragraphs mm -hmm. on that, and that's. Yeah. And it, it's some new, <clears throat> newer cases, but that's where you want to go. Okay. So that's what you, the basic training is, you know, try to get the book out in front of you. The, the, the problem with sitting on a board like this is you're expected to be, a, you know, a bit of a lawyer and sort of up, up on, on case law, because when I'm normally training a planning board or a zoning board, I say, just read that thing, and you don't need to really go much beyond that. But now you're being sort of stretched into some um, other, you know, other case laws, case law not only in Maine but elsewhere. So that, that's hard. I don't. Sometimes I wonder what the court really appreciates with what you're trying to do. So keep it simple, um, and then you know, we'll just go from there. Um, okay. So I. Why don't we do a couple things first? Why don't we, number one, decide on another time to get together to review um, what you're going to compile for us, okay? Yeah. <coughs> <If> the, <coughs> excuse me. If the 31st is open it, and people can do the 31st, I don't envision it to be a long meeting. I don't have a problem with the 31st. I lived in my house 23 years. We've not had a trick-or-treater yet. So <laughs> it must be a scary house. No, it's 700 feet back off the road. Oh, yeah. So it's this long, dark driveway. Nobody comes down. It's so pretty scary in it just in of itself. Just in itself. Okay. So I, I have no problem showing up on the 31st. It, it would have to be before 5 o'clock for me. Because yeah. you have parties at five. No, I have triplet girls going out with me. <laughs> <laughs> you do what? Yeah, that's fine. My triplet girls going out. So. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> They're dressing up as triplets. <laughs> <laughs> what are you dressing up as? An attempted father. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can people meet before five? It's okay with me. You can. I, I, yeah. I can't no, do any earlier than four is the problem. So I put, as long as we can be done in an hour, I think we're good. Yeah. You can meet at what time? At four o'clock. At from four on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about council? I'll be here. You don't have to be here, but obviously you're welcome to be here. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll I'm assuming that you might want to be here. Yes. I just want to double check. 
Okay. So why don't, why don't we do um, four o'clock on the thirty first? Just let me check before I speak. Four o'clock on the thirty-first. Mm -hmm. Right here, and we'll, um, and then we'll hash around the uh, findings of fact that uh, Gerald will put together. We'll I only get those on Tuesday or Wednesday. At, 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 all right, on and time. then we can make our own notes on it, and then yeah. as long as we don't talk to one another and just we'll discuss them once we get here. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, I too would just like to comment um, <clears throat> on this. You know, follow up on what Gerald said about having uh, the discrimination cases. And uh, first of all, I appreciate both counsel preparing the findings of facts for us. That was very helpful. I think it, uh, uh, it helped in a number of ways for me anyway. And, um, and I think it was really an interesting case. Uh, it was very interesting. And I, and I think it, it might even open up more questions down the road from, for other municipalities and, and the such. But I, uh, I think it was presented well by both sides, and I just want to say thank you for your time here in front of this board and trying to make something <clears throat> necessarily might not be as simple as it seems on the, on the, on the face value um, and try to explain it to um, a bunch of, uh, you know, townies. Well, I, I found if you read one and didn't read the other one, it was a compelling case, and then you'd read the other one, and that was a compelling case, and then you had to decide which one actually had more merit based on the cases and, and what our rules are. And, you know, so I found, you know, like it may go further because it, it is a legal issue versus an assessment issue, which is what we're normally reviewing. So um, having said that, and thank you for your time, and any other things to come before the board here? Hearing none, I'll end this meeting and we can all go watch the Patriots. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your time.